Welcome back to Fish the Moment. Today I'm on Grand Lake in Oklahoma and I'm gonna be testing out a brand new offshore lure I've never thrown before. And that is a heavy deep water chatterbait. Okay, so here's the bait we're gonna be throwing today. It is the one ounce New Tech Baits Mega Bladed Chatterbait. And I'll get into the bait a little bit more here in a minute, but basically what I'm gonna do today, guys, is throw exclusively these Mega Bladed Chatterbaits. If you look at the deck of the boat here, I have two rods. I have a white one and a black one, that's it. And when I'm trying to fish a new bait offshore, I find that it's best to just stick with that one bait all day and throw it in areas where you know that you've caught fish before. And we're actually starting here on an offshore rocky ridge where I caught a really good fish earlier this week during my offshore versus shallow challenge with Randy. So I know there are fish here and I know that this chatterbait is going to catch something if I put it around some fish. And so I'm going to rotate some of the areas where I know the fish are and I'm going to experiment with a lot of different retrieves, with uh, different cadences, different equipment, trailers, all kinds of stuff to see which is the most effective and you're gonna put the most fish in the boat with this new bait. So to start out, I'm kind of just going to go with a regular slow retrieve with this big chatterbait. I'm not going to do anything fancy with it. I might stop it every once in a while to make sure I'm keeping bottom contact. But I'm basically going to just let that thing get as close to the bottom as possible and let that blade do the work. And I actually filmed this bait underwater in an Olympic sized swimming pool to see how it would look down in 13 feet of water. And here's some footage of this bait. It looks really, really good. It has a violent side to side action and it kicks a lot even when it's coming in contact with the bottom and the areas i'm fishing today are no more than about 15 feet deep and so i think that's the perfect depth range for this big chatterbait i don't think i sh should probably throw this bait too deep just because it will rise up due to that big blade i'm gonna have to go to the heavier size if i want to get it deeper but for right now i think that this is going to be the deal if i can figure out where the fish are and the best retrieve for this bait my initial thoughts when I first saw this mega bladed chatterbait is that it would be a really productive bait in that 8 to 15 foot zone offshore. The reason I like this new tech chatterbait is because it's actually weedless and this makes it really good around rocks and cover. So I want to start experimenting with this by throwing it in some offshore rocky ridges, again in 8 to 15 foot, as well as some brush piles that I had found. The bait actually came through brush really well, as well as the rocks. I just wasn't really getting any bites. And it's surprising because I actually got some bites in these exact areas a few days prior on a jig. This may be because that bait has a very strong vibration to it, and that mega blade is actually deterring some of those fish from eating it. This had me a little bit confused on how to get the fish to actually eat this bait. I varied my retrieve speed, I tried to fish it off the bottom, on the bottom, burning the bait, slow crawling the bait, and didn't have any success for the first hour of the day. Okay, so I've been fishing this mega bladed chatterbait for about an hour and a half now, and I see some pros and some cons. So first for the positive news, this bait is a great tool for covering water. It stays down deep really well. This big mega blade doesn't cause it to lift off the bottom that much, and so I can keep it down there in that eight to 12 foot range and bang it up against the rocks really well. In addition, this new tech Mega Blade Chatterbait has a great design in terms of the head, as well as that double plastic weed guard, which really keeps this bait from getting hung up. I have fished it through three or four brush piles already, through some rocks, and I have not hung up either of the baits I've been throwing. And third, I just think that this bait is very unique. It has a lot of vibration, and I think it could draw some fish in, especially if they are a little more aggressive. Now for the cons or the negatives. First off, I've had two bites on this bait so far and I've missed both of them. And I mean, they hit it hard. And so I don't know if it was just a different species of fish or if maybe the design of this bait makes it so that the fish don't eat it as well. I know that chatterbait's notorious for causing fish to miss. And unless you have the perfect setup with the rod, the line, the gear, you're not going to be successful. So I'm probably gonna experiment with that some. And also this bait is pretty aggressive in the water. And so it doesn't really 
give me that much confidence that I'm catching every single fish down there. It's probably one of those baits that are only gonna draw some of the bigger fish to bite. And so in some of these areas I've fished, I think that I may have been able to get some bites if I've been throwing maybe like a finesse bait or something. And I'm actually going to experiment with that going forward. I'm actually gonna tie on a shaky head worm and see if I can follow up this chatterbait after I fish a spot to see if I've left any fish there, kind of do a cleanup. So that's kind of the goal for right now is to keep throwing this bait, maybe experiment with my equipment, experiment with some cleanup baits to see if I'm missing fish. And other than that, let's get back to it. After having no success with this chatterbait during the first hour and a half of the day, I decided to start expanding the types of areas I was fishing. I started by going shallower, in the four to seven foot range, still offshore, but a lot shallower than I was fishing earlier around rock and wood, to no success. I then moved deeper to that 15 to 20 foot range. It took me a little bit of time to actually find some fish, but I did manage to find a really nice offshore school, about 16 to 17 feet of water, on a rocky spot on a main lake point. The fish were set perfectly on the bottom, and I knew that they would probably bite a football jig or a Carolina rig. But I started by throwing that chatterbait down there and crawling it tight to the bottom. I also burned it up off the bottom and tried to fish it three to four feet off the bottom, try to pull some fish up off the bottom to eat it. None of those retrieves worked, so I decided to pick up a football jig and throw it down there. And on my third cast, I actually lost about a two and a half to three pound largemouth right after fishing that chatterbait in the exact same area. This kind of led me to believe that that chatterbait was maybe not the best bait for targeting those bass that were positioned tight to the bottom. And I might need to start looking for some fish that were set up differently in offshore structure and still in that deeper water to try to get a bite. Therefore, I started looking for some fish that were suspended in that 15 to 25 feet of water range, anywhere from three to five feet off the bottom. My thought is that the chatterbait might be a bait that I would fish like a big hollow body swim bait offshore, reeling it three to five feet off the bottom to get these fish to bite, instead of trying to reel it straight on the bottom like you would a crankbait or a jig. Oh! No! No! I had one! Dang it! Oh, finally got one. I, can't, I am losing so many fish recently, guys. This is crazy. That was a fish. I'm on a spot. There's a bunch of fish on it. I was like, if there, anything's going to bite this bait, or if there's any time for one to bite one, it's right now because there are a pile of fish on the spot. There's a nice brush pile down here. There's fish. It bit. Broke me off. I hadn't retied that bait in a while. I've been fishing it through a lot of rocks. Dang it. That sucks. Despite breaking off that fish, I finally have my first clue as to how these bass might react to and eat this mega bladed chatterbait. The area where I just broke off that fish was a main lake point in about 20 to 25 feet of water, and the bass were suspended anywhere from 2 to 5 feet off the bottom. They actually reacted to this bait much like they would to a big swim bait or hair jig out fish offshore, and I was burning this bait and also reeling it at a steady pace in the middle of the water column on that retrieve when the bass bit. I couldn't tell if they bit it while I was actually burning the bait or if it was on the steady retrieve at the time, but I knew I could experiment and hopefully replicate that bite if I could get some more fish to bite. Unfortunately, usually when you break off a fish in an offshore school like this, it will spook the school and cause them to stop biting. So I had to go and find a new area that was set up similarly. Fortunately, I was able to find another spot that had some fish schooled up on the tip of a point suspended off the bottom, and you'll see what happens. Got him. There we go. Fish on. Say I'm fish. Oh! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about right there. Magnum chatterbait, baby! Woo! I love catching my new bait. They're stacked up down there, guys. Switched over to the Picasso one and a quarter ounce chatterbait. And man, that's a good one right there off this point, baby. Wind blowing in, rocking all over the place. I'll talk about this bait, but I want to get back in there and get our fish because that thing crushed it. Yes! Oh, I got to weight on that guy. Three and a half pounder right there. Get back down there. Got to get back up to my spot, guys. This is what I'm talking about. New baits. 
Catching them offshore, baby. There we go. Got that fish on the Picasso ounce and a quarter mega bladed chatterbaits. And the reason I'm actually throwing this is because I broke off on another really good fish on another spot and lost my other chatterbait. So I decided to tie this one on. And I tested this one in the pool as well. And one thing I noticed with this chatterbait is that because it's an ounce and a quarter, it actually stayed really deep and was hard to fish in that 13 to 14 foot range because it would just get glued to the bottom. But the school of fish I found right here is in about 20 to 22 feet of water, which is a perfect depth for that little bit bigger chatter bait. And I got that fish suspended off the bottom. And the last spot I lost, actually broke off that fish, was another spot where the fish was suspended off the bottom, about 20, 22 feet of water. And I was just trying to reel that chatter bait kind of through them two to three feet off the bottom. And that's what happened on this spot too. And so we may have figured out the deal how to get these fish to eat it. Maybe it's not that bait you need to be throwing in that mid-depth range, that 8 to 12 like I thought it was, maybe you need to be throwing here a little bit deeper. I want to interrupt really quick to tell you guys about a $250 fishing tackle giveaway we're going to be doing on the Fish the Moment Facebook page. Just go to at Fish the Moment on Facebook and then like the page, follow the page, and comment on any of the recent posts. If you do this, you're going to have a chance to win one of five prize packs of fishing lures valued at $50. And we're going to be doing these giveaways every week to try to get more people to follow the Fish the Moment social media pages. We have almost 70,000 subscribers right now on YouTube, and we only have four to 5,000 followers on Instagram and Facebook. So we really appreciate you guys going over to those pages, liking and following the pages, and if you do, you have a chance to win some of these prize packs. But also, Randy and I are gonna be doing a lot of Facebook and Instagram Lives, as well as more video content exclusive for social media members. So definitely go to Fish the Moment on Facebook, as well as Instagram, by going to at Fish the Moment, follow the page, like it, and also comment on a recent Facebook post to be entered into the giveaway. The area where I just caught that fish was a main lake point, and the bass were suspended two to five feet off the bottom near the tip of the point in 20 feet of water. This is almost identical to the spot where I just broke off another fish, which means that I am finding a pattern in a way that I can replicate this mega bladed chatterbait bite. Unfortunately, I only got one bite off of this spot, but that's not that uncommon in the late summertime, especially when you have these big schools of fish that might be pressured by other anglers. A lot of times you can get those fish to react to one bait once or twice, then you need to change to a different bait to get that school to continue to feed. So I wasn't that disappointed that I only got one bite here. I was actually encouraged that I found a similar area and I was now figuring out a pattern to get these fish to bite this mega bladed chatterbait. I was also getting a little more dialed in on the retrieve I needed to use with this mega bladed chatterbait. Both my bites came when I had cast that bait out, let it sink to the bottom, and I had burned the reel handle seven or eight times, let the bait fall back down the bottom, burned it a handful more times, let it fall to the bottom, and then was reeling that bait in to bring it back to the boat. It didn't seem like the fish wanted that bait when I was burning it or when it was falling. They wanted it actually when I was reeling it back to the boat at a steady pace. However, they wouldn't bite it when I would just cast it down there and reel it in. It seemed like you needed that combination of the burning it, stopping it, and then that slow reel to get them to commit. I don't know if this was just a fluke and I didn't get enough bites on the day to determine if this is the retrieve that was necessary. I did actually catch several catfish that would bite it when I would reel the bait really quickly, stop it, and they'd bite it as it was falling back down to the bottom, almost like you would fish a hair jig. This means that I need to do a lot more experimentation on the retrieve, but one thing I can say is that I believe this bait is definitely useful when targeting suspended bass. It's not a bait you want to fish right on the bottom, it's a bait you want to fish anywhere from 2 to maybe 7 or 8 feet off the bottom to trigger those suspended bass. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up for the day guys, I'm back here at the boat ramp, and I want to give you some key takeaways I had from my day on Grand Lake trying to learn how to fish this mega bladed chatter bait. But before we get into that, let me just recap how the day went. Basically, Basically, I got two bass bites on this chatterbait all day. One broke me off, and the other was that three and a half pounder that I caught. I did actually catch several catfish on this bait, which is very interesting, but I really didn't get that many bites on it in total. But that's actually very common when you're trying to learn how to fish a new bait, because I was experimenting with where and how to fish this bait. I spent the majority of my morning actually trying to throw this uh, new tech 
Mega Blade Chowder Bait with the Weed Guard. And I thought that this was going to be a really key bait when fishing around rock and wood in that eight to 10 foot range. And while I did throw it a lot in that range and I didn't actually lose this bait at all, so I have confidence that I can actually throw it in these areas, I didn't get any bites. And moreover, I actually threw this bait on a spot where I ended up catching two fish late in the day while I was filming another video. And I pulled up, threw this bait in there, and then after I put it down, I threw a football jig in there and caught two really nice bass off an offshore rocky spot in like eight foot of water. And I also lost that another like two and a half, two and three quarter pounder on the football jig on another rocky spot after throwing this bait down there. And so it seems like when those bass are positioned really close to the bottom or around rock cover, these mega bladed chatter baits are probably not the best option. You might be better off fishing with a football jig, maybe even like a deep diving crankbait to get those fish to bite. And so the rock and the wood in eight to 12 feet of water wasn't the best application for this mega bladed chatter bait in the summertime. This may be a really good tactic in the fall and the spring with this exact bait. And I've seen that some baits are seasonal and may only work in certain depth zones and on certain types of cover in certain times of the year. But I actually did throw the same bait a little bit further down the lake in that 18 to 22 for the water range when that water cleared up and I started finding some schools of bass offshore. And I broke off a fish on this bait and then switched over to this Picasso ounce and a quarter mega bladed chatter bait. And I was putting that Jenko fishing tremor shad on the back of it. And it's that fluke style bait. And I like this fluke style bait on the back of this mega bladed chatter bait because it doesn't have as much drag as a paddle tail swim bait and allows me to burn that bait back to the boat. And really the way I was fishing this bait was targeting those suspended bass that were sitting anywhere from three to maybe seven feet off the bottom in those offshore schools. And it's the same type of fish I would target with a flutter spoon and a hair jig. And a lot of guys fish a flutter spoon and a hair jig all around the country. And I feel like that bait is getting a little bit overused and those fish are getting a little bit conditioned to it on certain lakes. And so this mega bladed chatter bait might be a new tool in my arsenal to fish on pressured schools of fish because I doubt very many guys are throwing this bait like I am with that big fluke burning your reel handle, then killing it and letting that kind of glide forward, burning the reel handle, letting it glide forward. And I really feel like this could be an awesome technique to fish behind, again, a flutter spoon or a hair jig to get a few extra bites, and also to target the bigger fish in the school. If you notice the bass that did bite this bait, they were pretty good ones. I think the one that broke me off was a decent one, and then I caught a three and a half pounder. And so the smaller fish weren't really getting this bait, but the bigger fish were. And so with the profile, with the weight, and the big vibration, I'm not surprised. But you know, even though I only got two bites on this bait all day long, I think that that's actually a good thing because it allows me to target those better than average fish, those better quality fish, and kind of weed through some of the smaller ones. And you know, if I need to get a limit, I can always go to a drop shot or a shaky head or something. But once I have my limit, I might be able to pick up this mega bladed chatter bait, go off of those deeper suspended bass, and put some fish in the boat. And most of the time with these new baits I'm trying, they're not going to be baits that I use as a staple in my arsenal. Usually I'm going to stick with the classics like a football jig or a drop shot or a shaky head or a deep diving crankbait. But these baits are great baits to add in addition to a lot of the standard staple offshore baits. Like today I had three keeper bites on the football jig which probably would have gone somewhere between 10 and a half to 11 pounds. And if I would have added in my one chatter bait fish as well as the one I broke off, I may have had 17 to 18 pound limit and I may have only been able to get three bites the football jig and I was able to add a few more on this and that's how you do really well in tournaments and so this is definitely a cool bait to check out I'll link everything in the description in terms of how I was throwing it uh, the gear all that stuff I was just throwing the seven foot uh, medi or seven foot six heavy action bait casting rods basically just a flipping stick but that's a decent tip to it it's not like a broomstick and just a six four to one gear ratio reel with 15 pound fluorocarbon line and yeah that's pretty much it so I had a blast trying this new bait today I had a little bit of success and I'm gonna keep Keep it around in my arsenal going forward to see if I can expand on this. I'm also going to try this new tech bait around the shallower cover in different seasons of the year to see if that will work as well. And so, other right, than that, guys, hope you enjoyed my day on the lake experimenting with these new baits. And hopefully, you learned something and can take something with you next time you go fishing. So, other right, than that, thanks for checking out the video. Leave a like down below if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. And I'll see y'all next one.